This formation is made up of three key layers and is generally seen as an attacking formation. At the back, the goalkeeper is protected by four defenders, a right back, two centre backs and a left back. In front of them are three central midfielders who can be organised in a variety of ways. We'll expand on that shortly. Finally, the attack is led by a front three, which is generally made up of two wingers, or in some cases, inside forwards, and a central striker as a focal point in the attacking phase. This layout allows teams to evenly cover the pitch and ensure a healthy balance between defence, midfield and attack. That being said, different coaches will choose different ways of organising players within the 4-3-3 formation. Probably the most common variation used involves dropping back one of the three central midfielders into a defensive position where they can provide protection for the back four as a holding midfielder. For a more offensive option, it's also possible to push forward one of these midfielders to support the attack, while the two other midfielders sit in behind. As soccer formations continue to evolve, one inventive variation of 4-3-3 has gained increasing prominence. This is the development of the false nine. In this form of the 4-3-3 formation, a team's central forward will drop into a slightly deeper, more creative role, linking the midfield and attack and allowing the two wide players to cause problems higher up the pitch. This has the benefit of confusing opposition defenders by blurring the lines between midfield and attack and making it more difficult for them to know who to mark. But this is just one of many examples of the tactical flexibility it provides. Let's spend some time looking into why people opt to play 4-3-3. The 4-3-3 shape can sometimes leave teams lacking slightly in defensive areas, particularly if their full backs push up high. This is particularly true in the event of opposition counterattacks, which can be especially dangerous if a team is playing a high defensive line. Fitness is also a key issue here. If players aren't fit enough to press properly, it can be difficult to make a 4-3-3 system work as they may be particularly susceptible when against quick counterattacks. Full backs and central midfielders must have particularly high energy and stamina levels, as their jobs involve lots of movement up and down the pitch. There's an important element of discipline involved in the fullback roles, too. If this area of the pitch is your weakest, a 4-3-3 probably isn't the best formation for you. This conforms to a more general rule, which is that this formation can produce an over-reliance on top-quality players in key areas of the pitch such the central defensive midfielder. However, in recent years, the teams who do have those world-class have increasingly used 4-3-3 to get the best out of them. The 4-3-3 structure ticks most boxes both in and out of possession. However, there are ways of stopping even the most well-oiled 4-3-3 machine. One way to counter a high-pressing 4-3-3 structure is by playing around the press, rather than through it. Thomas Tuchel's PSG side provided a great example of this to beat Liverpool 2-1 in the Champions League in 2018. By playing an unorthodox 3-3-4 system in possession, they stretched the play wide and made Liverpool's central midfield three narrow and ineffectual. By developing numerical superiority in wide areas, this system counteracts the impact of the wide players in a 4-3-3. Getting the better of a team that's playing 4-3-3 relies on defensive players having a lot of patience and ensuring they pick out the right passes, even when under intense pressure. Therefore, Having good ball-playing central defenders is key to stopping a 4-3-3 system. Once the ball gets higher up the pitch, it's often possible to exploit the high defensive line of the back four by playing early balls in behind that create one-on-one -on -one situations with the opposition goalkeeper. While the high defensive line has its benefits, exploiting it is also one of the best ways of hurting a team that's organised in a 4-3-3 structure. Another crucial aspect of facing up against this formation is fitness. You have to be able to match or ideally better the levels of stamina and energy demonstrated by the opposition. Doing this, while also employing a focused strategy in terms of limiting your opponent's chances and beating their press to get forward yourselves, gives you a chance of being able to stop the 4-3-3 formation from being effective. 